Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today, it's the first race, it's the first race of my time in France. And it's my first, like, proper race in, like, 18 months, I want to say, you know, I've raced a lot of mountain baton, it's fun. But, you know, I just, I just want, I want some corners, okay? Oh, I, I did throw accent as well, but, you know, it's not, it's not a town centre crit, and it hasn't got a lot of crowds. So, this is the first proper race for a very, very long time, and I'm very excited. So, it's in a place called St. Samson. Um, it's a 1.1 kilometer circuit, so super technical. Um, we're really looking forward to it. I, I, I haven't really got out for myself. I uh, can't even speak. I'm so excited. So, yeah, I haven't got a huge amount to say other than it's a, it's a circuit, it's technical, it should be loads of fun. There's going to be loads of crowds, and uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So, we're just going to get in the car now. It was raining this morning, a little bit sunnier now, so perfect weather, and uh, I'll see you at the circuit. Just filled one of my bottles with SF baked fuel orange flavour because you can never have too many carbs. And of course some gels in the bag, but most importantly the Turbo Plus because 150ml of caffeine, the menthol, it's a it's a it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Two hours later. <laughs> Hello guys, so we are here at the race in St. Samson. Guy coming up the tyres. Uh, we're just going to ride down to the HQ, meet the rest of the guys, and uh, get our numbers to sign on. So, uh, yeah, it's a 1.1 kilometre crit. I did a bit of a crit preview in the last video. It's, uh, it's fairly technical, so it should be a lot of fun. The sun is shining for the first time in a very long time, so uh, look forward to that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in a bit. Bar line, the French countdown. I know my French numbers. So uh, I know when to go. Uh, pretty hectic, pretty pretty fast start. Lots of attacks going from the gun. Uh, it wasn't too fast to be fair in the bunch. Just uh, lots of people sending themselves off. And not too long later, you know, the adrenaline, the fun racing. I thought, you know what? Let's just uh, let's just do my own, have a little bit of fun, and put an attack in. Um, you know, it's pretty standard for always essentially the first race of the season or the first sort of crit of the season. Just to yeah, do a little launch here. Uh, I think I was solo for maybe a lap or half a lap, and uh, then a couple guys ended up coming over with me. But you know, I wasn't you know hanging around trying to trying to get a gap. I don't I don't know why I do these things. Like I'm not going to stay away for an hour and a half. So yeah, it's more just for for morale, I guess, if nothing else. And uh, yeah, here's the technical section. Super fun. Uh, right, left, right, and uh, you know, I was trying to clip those apexes, flick it over, clip the other apex. And uh, yeah, that was a really cool section. And then trying to get the speed back up before this corner. So yeah, got caught by the bunch and uh, lots of counter attacks. People just sending up the road. There goes my teammate Guy. And uh, yeah, just sort of sit in the bunch and wait for some more stuff to happen. So here we go through the technical section again. It had a bit of a lull at the front of the race. And I thought, you know what? Let's put in another dig. Um, Ended up going clear solo and was eventually joined by another guy, I don't know his name, and we formed a two up for a few laps. I was just absolutely trying to nail the uh, technical section, you know, just trying to keep the minimum, the minimum speed as high as possible, especially on the final corner where, uh, you know, you, you don't want to have to waste as little energy as possible in accelerating. So, yeah, keeping that speed high makes such a difference to the lap time. So uh, here we go, he took a turn here, we sort of swapped turns at the same point for two or three laps. And uh, next lap was uh, a prem lap, so he was on the front through the final corner. They'd already called that the next lap would be money. Very kind of them to say that in English, because if they didn't, I would have had absolutely no idea. Coming into the sprint, I wasn't really sure if he'd heard that they were saying it was a prem, so I was just, you know, sitting on, winding up. Gave myself a bit of a gap to rush, side sprinting, but I saw he just didn't even accelerate, so I quickly knocked that down to save, save some energy. And uh, yeah, he didn't even sort of try to go with me, so from that point on, I was solo. 
and uh, if anyone knows me as a hybrid rider, I'm, I'm not designed to go solo, but you know, I full commit, I, uh, because why not, you know, we had a fairly big gap at that point, I think it ended up going up to a max of 30 seconds, so yeah, it was a pretty big gap, I couldn't actually see the peloton on the, on the home straight when I looked back, so part of me, part of me was thinking that maybe I could lap the field, but that part of me was wrong. Um, although I, I did get a lot of motivation from the crowd, which was pretty awesome every time coming around, so that was nice. And I was just focusing on nailing the corners every single lap. You know, a few lap riders here, but you know that means I just get a little bit closer to the motorbike, a little bit of draft, and just a couple, a couple more watts saved. It's a really flowy circuit here. I was just trying to make sure I put the power on the uh, slightly uphill just to keep the speed up, and then you know save as much energy through the corners and uh, get as aero as possible on this straight. So later on, about half an hour solo, 20 minutes solo, I got caught by a group of eight with my teammate. So that seemed like a promising break, you know, two of us in a group of eight. But unfortunately, not too long later, we got caught by the peloton. And here again, I let Harry did an attack. I sat on the front and uh, no one came around me. So yeah, it's, uh, that was cool. And then I'm getting another gap, but all in all, they ended up coming back. So uh, yeah, lots of breaks going, lots of breaks coming back. It was. Uh, Pretty, pretty aggressive through the middle part of the race, but nothing was sticking properly. So after I got brought back from that expedition at the start of the race, I was pretty wrecked, I'm not gonna lie. So I was just trying to sit in the wheels and recover as much as possible, trying to stay near the front because on a circuit like this, the Constantina effect is pretty strong. So yeah, save as much energy as possible, try and finesse the corners as much as possible. And uh, eventually I sort of recovered to a point where I could ride again. So yeah, another few attacks here, but nothing that really made it anyway. So here, this is the attack that Harry made to bridge to a couple of people up the road, which eventually formed an eight-man break that had ended up being pretty strong and I think got up to around 20 seconds of a gap. And this was coming towards the end of the race. We had about, I want to say, 20, 15 minutes to go at this point. So uh, yeah, the bunch, bunch wasn't really reacting too much. And you know, there's a few attacks with adding a little bit of impetus, but not a huge amount. So the gap was getting bigger. Then with about four, four, four laps to go, um, we're going through the technical section. I've been sort of blocking a little bit and this guy came through. He was sort of taking the corners a bit slowly and uh, it looked like he was teeing up an attack. So I thought, why not? I'll go with him. As long as we get a gap, it's okay. Then through here, so I did a half attack and then eased up a bit. And uh, I thought, you know what, why not? This is, this is the opportunity to bridge up to the front group on the last few laps. So I put in a bit of a dig here made sure there was no one on my wheel, especially up this little bit, it's quite nice to be getting a gap because uh, it's about 3%, so it's just a little gradient, a little launch pad. And uh, yeah, then I was just focusing on getting aero and uh, trying to bridge to the front group. I wanted to try and come by this guy as fast as I could really, so but another little surge as I came past and managed to stop him from getting on the wheel. This lap was, I was probably the most aggressive through the technical section, just trying to absolutely nail every apex and flick it over through here. And I think this is one of the bits where I could make up so much time just by being as efficient as possible through the corners. So luckily I, I made up a, a good amount of the gap there and then dressed up that little, that little kicker I was talking about and managed to close the final gap.
So fast forward, just coming up to one lap to go on the final corner of the penultimate lap. Um, I'm on Harry's wheel, with a couple guys in front, and this guy in red puts in a little dig through the start finish line. We all follow through. At this point, you know, obviously, adrenaline's flowing. One lap to go, the bell's going. I think that was a bell. I can't actually remember. Um, so coming through this technical section, the guy on the front didn't really rail it too fast, so it wasn't um, it wasn't super hard to hear. We could sort of recover a little bit. I can see both of us at zero watts, but quite a bit. Eventually the guy flicked the elbow, he peeled off. Harry took over to give the promise lead out from heaven that we spoke about many months ago when probably at that point we didn't even know if we'd be able to come over to France. So it's been a long time, long time coming this race. And uh, yeah, launch out that little berg, call it a berg, a little rise. Accelerated again through here and uh, 400 meters to go, I'm just going to let the finish play out because the last couple of corners. Uh, he put it to absolute perfection to uh, to position himself in a way that the other guys couldn't come around the outside as easily, so it just gave me a, an awesome gap to launch through. So sick. Voilà, Fredy Lefer, Harry Johnson, mesdames, messieurs. And we are really happy to see you in the first, uh, first place for the win tonight. Mesdames, messieurs, Wayne Walters, le corps de la formation du CC Ponquetta, avec le trophée, le bouquet, bien entendu, pour le vainqueur du jour. Adam Vera également, je le remercie pour son soutien et toute sa disponibilité. Je vais donc proposer une discussion pour être le deux ans prochain. next day now uh you know recovered got home we got back super late and the caffeine the caffeine from the turbo gel took a while to wear out so i didn't, I didn't get a lot of sleep i'm pretty tired so i'm just gonna go for an easy spin now and then probably have a nap and uh, then i'm gonna edit this video so that's this is what you're watching after you know what i mean anyway i just yeah just uh, took the bike to the bike shop this morning because a little known fact my front brakes didn't work at all yesterday. I realized the day before I needed to get them bled because I think when I was riding on that rough stuff, when I was riding towards the Tour de France, I don't know what happened, but it must have made a leak happen or somehow got air into the system because you really had to like pump it a few times to get them to work. And uh, yeah, but luckily I didn't really need the brake. Didn't need the brakes too much on that circuit. Um, I only really need to brake a couple times when I was in the bunch. So yeah, it wasn't too bad and uh, yeah, the brakes feel absolutely perfect now. They've been bled. So thanks to Plestan Cycles for sorting that out. That was a very technical crit. Um, tires made a huge difference. I'm always, if it's technical, I always say go body weight for your pressure. So I was running about 70, 75 PSI. The grip on these was was amazing. The technical section, I was, I was literally opening up a gap behind me pretty much every time through. Um, so it just goes to show that the tyres make a huge difference, the pressure makes a difference, and uh, yeah, I really rate these Hutchinson Fusion 5 performance, and uh, the grip on them is amazing. It's mostly smooth, which makes the grip really consistent when you're leaning it over, and obviously that is super important and crucial to uh, keeping that cornering speed high. Anyway, I'm just going to go for my super easy spin now. Like I said, I'm pretty tired, but that's going to be a wrap for this video. That's going to be the end of this video, so thanks for watching. If you liked it, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, please, because I know a lot of you aren't subscribed, so yes, please. Um, anyway, see you later.